in this video I'm going to show you one of the most powerful concepts that you can use to stop the bunch tight end offense square its tracks and also one of the best most underrated concepts for defending tight ends in Madden and something that we used to do way back in the day that I think has come back in this game to show you how to really slow down tight end post routes and really any route uh, from a tight end, a corner route, post route, curl route, any of that stuff, you're going to be really um, equipped to shut down. Now, if you're new to the channel, I want to ask you to go ahead and hit the sub button. It's free to do that. We're on the road to 30,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for passing 25,000. It was really exciting. And um, also wanted to let you know that if you've not picked up my Patreon membership or if you're not a Patreon member yet, I would encourage you to do that. That's basically where we break down all of our ebooks, all of our offensive ebooks, defensive ebooks, weekly updates. If you guys want to get better at the game and you want to get serious about your Madden game, I would really encourage you to join our Patreon. It's only $10 to sign up, and as soon as you sign up, you'll get access to over 27 offensive and defensive ebooks. And in addition to that, you'll get a ton of more content on top of that with weekly updates and stuff like that. Those ebooks also update throughout the year, so you always have the most up to date strategy content in the game. Okay, guys, we're going to be taking a look today at a concept that is really, really effective for stopping tight end, uh, bunch tight end, trips tight end, any formation that has like a nub tight end. Um, this is a really, 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 really powerful tip. Okay, so in this video, we're going to show you how to stop the bunch tight end bomb. Basically, everything from bunch tight end is bad. Um, or at least a lot of stuff is bagged with this defense. Now, you could run this out of cover four quarters. You could also run this out of cover four palms. And I'll show the, I'll explain the, the big differences between the two of them uh, in the video as well in terms of just how they're going to defend. But real simple defense, really. So cover four quarters, um, the setup is really simple. We're going to show blitz, pinch deep. I like to pinch my defense and then show blitz, but you can do it if you want to just pinch your line that's fine but I like to pitch my whole defense we're gonna crash our line out now from there here's our coverage adjustments this guy right here is in a really good position this is one of the real in interesting things about big nickel I when I teach from big nickel also um, I got a brand new big nickel ebook in the patreon if you want to check it out um, it's best defense I've put out all year but what I wanted to say about when I teach from it I teach with auto flip off Bait and auto alignment to base align. Okay, really important. Those two things are really important because this guy technically is your nickel corner. So normally this formation would flip, but I have auto flip off. And the reason why is because of the alignment that I get with big nickel. You see, I have this really interesting little alignment over here, and I also have this alignment over here. But it really doesn't matter. Like if I flip this play, it would be the same thing, it'd just be flipped. So I mean it's not the formation is symmetrical. It's why I don't use auto flip. Okay. So anyways, back to the point here. So the big point that I want to make is two things. Um, I don't have my zone drops on. When you don't have your zone drops on, if I were to put uh, Douglas here in a curl flat. Okay. I just want you to watch this. So I'm just going to clear everything out here. Get everybody out of the way. I want you to watch what happens to Chris Goblin. So let's say I run Chris Goblin on a crosser. Okay. I am going to get a press, of course, as I say that I don't, <laughs> why would I? Uh, but generally speaking, I get a press on the slot. I don't know why I didn't. Maybe it's a weird thing about Big Nickel, but basically if this guy is, I mean, he will press one of these dudes and you're gonna get what's called a zone chuck. And a zone chuck is basically, see there, see, it gets a, it'll delay the route. It's where they're gonna run through the zone and the zone is gonna like pop them and, and give you a little bit of delay. That concept, does for the most part not apply to a tight end you're going to see right here what i mean so if i run the tight end on a post this quarter flat is outside of him this is why nub quote unquote tight ends are so good because what you'll see is he won't get touched he won't get pressed and i can basically there my quarter flat plays it but that doesn't always happen i will say so you see the point in press man if I was in, if I was in, uh, in press man, the tight end also doesn't get pressed. Those are the two main reasons as to why he's one of the most powerful resources on the field. He also is a player that can pick up every blitz in the game. Okay, 
most people in this year's game are not putting five out. You're getting four out. You're either getting, um, you know, the running back will go on a route and the tight end will stay in a block or the running back will stay in a block and the tight end will go on a route. Very common, okay? So what we want to do here, back to our adjustments, once we've showed blitz and pinched our line and crashed them out, and that's just for the look and the pass rush. You don't have to do that. But what you're going to get here is we're going to man this guy up on the tight end. This guy right here. He's in a really good position to guard the tight end. And what you'll notice is that this tight end post will get followed on this play. You see he gets followed. But uh-oh, as you can see here, like my guy caught up. But it's not perfect. It's not perfect by any means. Now, the other reason why I like to do the man up of the tight end is because of what it does when the tight end blocks. So I'm gonna block my tight end. And what you'll notice is when I run this bomb, he will actually go guard. Generally speaking, we'll go guard the running back. I guess he didn't wanna do it today, but he normally does. He normally will go guard the running back, okay? So now you've got the running back manned up on that side. You Not only can you take away wheels better, but the wheel won't pull routes as bad as it normally does. So those are two real powerful tips in of itself, but the, the, the problem is if they run PA boot over, let's say they run PA boot over, and I man up the tight end, what happens when the running back and the tight end block? You'll see that this guy kind of plays like a spy, but that still gets open, that route right there. So we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. We're going to, everything's the same, we're gonna man this guy for the tight end, but now here's the, here's the real powerful tip. We're going to take this guy right here and we're going to put him in a curl flat. Now, that's going to guard the little crosser or, you know, a little slant or whatever. But watch what it does to this tight end post. I think it's really important. You're going to see that he's going to kind of bump him just, just initially, even if for a second. And then he get a great bump there. Um, but he's 90% of the time this will happen. He is going to bump. If you put this guy in a curl flat. He is going to bump the tight end and you're going to get kind of an inside outside bracket on him for just a second. And what it does a lot of times is it will help your guy catch up because you see there, like if he doesn't press him, yeah, my guy can still make a play on it, but he's not going to make as good of a play as he normally would. And so if you put him in, you, you can mess with the different types of purple zones. Um, I think a seam flat is also really good. So I'll show you a seam flat here. You want to get this guy inside. I'm not really showing that, but my user would be like right in here, of course. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll get that right there. You see how you delayed him? Now look at my man coverage. It's on him all the way across the for all, all across the formation. Why? Because my guy bumps him. The other thing that this does is it cancels out route tech abilities. So a lot of route tech abilities or deep out leads or whatever route running abilities they have on their tight end, if you get this jam on him, a lot of times, um, not all the time, but a lot, most of the time, it will guard this tight end significantly better than it would if you don't. And you'll see right here, boom, we get that delay, and now we've got help on that side of the field. Now, the other thing that we can do, of course, that you might not, you know, you've got a purple there, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult um, of a throw for sure. I think one of the other things that I've been forgetting to do here is pass commit. So we'll put the two purples out there and then we'll do that and we'll pass commit. Now, again, this still applies to this situation right here. Like if they're going to do this, watch the man guy. You see here we've got man coverage on that back. That allows that quarter zone to drop back and to play that bomb really, really well out of this play. Yet another reason why this is such a powerful concept. Um, one other thing I want to say about this real quick, you can, if you want to leave this guy here, you could take this guy and put him in main coverage on the tight end and drop a vert hook. Sometimes these vert hooks will do the same basic concept. So let me get my user out of the way so he doesn't mess this up. But anyway, you'll see right here, see how you kind of gets this delay on him. But as you can see, now your post is, if you got a really good player on that post, that could be a potential problem. Now, I said I wanted to talk about a little bit, for just a second, the brief difference between cover four palms and cover four quarters when we're talking about a nub tight end. When we're talking about a nub tight end, and particularly the tight end post route, what you'll see here is in palms, that 
corner will guard him all the way across the field. Um, and you see, he, he basically man locks onto him, okay? Why this could be helpful is I'll show you something else. Let's say that we do that where we have this guy here, we do that, but we're in palms now, okay? Watch this tight end on the post. And what you'll see is you get a double team inside outside bracket approach. It's almost impossible to throw that route. Now this doesn't just apply, okay? This does not just apply to cover four palms against bunch tight end. Everything that I said also applies to trips tight end. Why could this, why, why you might be asking is this, is this important? Because the tight end, in my opinion, is one of the most important resources in these offenses. And when you can shut him down with an adjustment like this and still be able to have good coverage on a running back if they block the tight end and send the running back out, this to me is really valuable. So you see here, I'm here. I've got literally no responsibility. There's nothing I need to do. And you'll see that this match coverage will absolutely bag the tight end post and will most of the time bag everything else on the play as well. So you see there, where am I throwing? Where am I throwing? That's one of the most popular concepts in the game this year. And there's nowhere to go with the football. That is why I like um, cover four palms and cover four quarters together. When you put the two and when you put the two of them together, they can really, really lock down these nub tight end type formations. I'll show you one last thing um, with this cover four palms. If you wanted to send some pressure, what I would, uh, so like, let's say you're watching this, you're like, well, I want to blitz from this. Well, what you could do, you know this guy right here is going to guard the tight end across the field, okay? So what you can do is you can go ahead and man this guy, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, blitz this guy off the edge. You know you've got this guy in coverage, and now this guy, you can drop him down, and then now your responsibility becomes the deep crossing routes from right to left. So you can send some pressure off of this, and still keep your integrity. So, you know, if you get them in a situation where, you know, you just want to have a little bit of extra pressure, you'll see right here, the tight end's still going to be guarded. You just got to get back over here and help on that crosser. And as you can see, this is a great way to defend one of the best concepts in Madden 22. So anyways, that is just a little pro tips and things you can do out of quarters and palms that are really helpful for defending the bomb and also really helpful for defending the tight end. I think the tight end is one of the most powerful resources that most offenses have this year because he can pick up a lot of pressures. Also, his routes primarily, most of them, the majority of the tight end routes this year's game will be very effective against man-to-man. -man. This is a way you can kind of have um, some, use some really good coverage on him. Thanks for watching the video, and if you like the video, this is just a sneak peek of some of the stuff that we talk about in our Patreon membership. I'd really encourage you to get in there. Um, I think in the summer months, that's where people get better at Madden. People are either locked in in the summer um, or they're not. You know, it's just like in the NFL. The off season is really where you get better because it's where you get more. It's where your reads get better. You get more systematic. You start to understand there's things that transfer year to year in the game, and that's going to make you a better Madden player. My personal opinion so if you want to really get serious about your madden game i'd really encourage you spend the 10 bucks get in the patreon and start learning why things work and how things work versus one another learn the guides learn the systems and you're going to be a really good madden player in madden 23 thanks for watching the video if you want to check out the patreon there's a link in the description you can sign up today for just 10 bucks